Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. Keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring attention to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound, please. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Homage to the Blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our practice session, as usual, we'll take a few minutes for ourselves to, to become very clear with the, the techniques we practice here. And at the same time, it is important for yourself to know out of this practice, how the clarity, your inner awareness become more sharper and clear. Because once you know it yourself, while you practice and anywhere you go, and this go with you, and it's going to be with you. So that is very important. And most of time when it comes to day-to-day -day life, why we mostly give up things because we don't know about it. So once you know basically exactly what to do and how it can, can develop and what is the what are the benefits that you can gain so then by the time you can develop uh, your your own way of practice little by little so that's why our very purpose hmm, is this uh, giving some basic information for yourself tools for yourself to build up this spirit, spiritual path so you're going to be your own guru or you're going to be your own teacher, you're going to be your own master. So you have to take that responsibility. So this is not a kind of like uh, just so we come every day, half an hour, one hour and head massage ourselves and go and it's not like that. It doesn't work for anybody. So that's why you have personally yourself some responsibility to, to build up the path for you. Because this is what you're going to take with you. You know, that all other things, by the time we have to let go, look at your life around you, that all the material things, the wealth, the properties, that everything, by the time, sometimes we have to let go. And even our loved ones, you know, husband or wife or children, sometimes we have to let go by the time. They, they go their own way. Even maybe you have a bigger house, they have their own room and they do whatever they want and you don't know. Even maybe sometimes you live in the same house, but you don't have a kind of like a conversation for a few days sometimes. You don't, you don't look at the person face to face sometimes, you know, for a few days. So you have to, it's kind of like you have, even though we know we, we are in this conventional life, end of the day, most of time, that your own mind will help for you. So that's why develop this mental path is very necessary for you. And uh, because once you have that clarity within yourself, it will be helpful for, for, the, for your entire life. 
and not only for this life, even your whole sansaric journey. So it's going to become a great benefit for you. So when and when it comes to the meditation, as you know, that our very purpose is understand the reality. So reality or the dharma or the truth, then whatever exists as it is, it is better for us to see. So then when it comes to the present moment, just living in the moment or the living in the present moment sometimes doesn't work if you can't see the reality. So then you have to be very careful about that. Okay? Sometimes people, it is being in the moment, being in the present moment is a kind of like a very famous word nowadays. But you have to see why you have to be in the moment. If you can't get the reality, if you can't see the reality, if you can't develop your wisdom out of the moment you settle down, you know, then it becomes useless. Because that when it comes to our mind, that our mind always develop this perception and the kind of like a mental factors itself and we hold it to that and that all the mental factors we, we take it's kind of like a I am or the self and that self every day build up this journey so what you have to understand so whatever that things come to you as thoughts it's not you, it, it's, it's belong to all the human nature. Each and every human mind has that mental practice. So when the thought arises, when you say something, oh, oh, it is beautiful, maybe you, you think you are the one who's seeing the beauty. No, your mind has a mental factor, arise as a beauty. So that beauty, see the beauty. When you get angry and you may think, oh, I am get angry. You personalize the anger. No, your mind has a mental factor as an anger. When the anger arises, what happened? You clinging to that and then you claim it as you. But it is no, it, it is not you, it is a mental factor. So the calmness or the the the, the happiness, this is all the same. But without seeing it yourself, it as a mental factor, what will happen? This or everything you build up as you, so then by the time, you can't get out of it. So this is what calls sansara. This is what called life. This is what called you. And maybe you say, you can't get out of your life. So what does that mean? Who is you and what is your life? So if you claim as you, as separate person from the life, why you can't get, can't get out? No, so just imagine this is me, this is house, okay? And I can get out at any time. But if I say, oh, this is me, this is my house, I can't get out of this, what does that mean? If it is you, and if, it is, if you separate something from you, why you can't get out of it? So then just imagine when you say, I can't get out of my mind. What does that mean? Who is you and who is your mind? You know, I can't get out of this problem. Who is you and what is your problem? Because you are the one who personalized the problem. And because of that, you see the problem as separate. And then you are the one who again claim you can't get out of it. But you have to understand that all the mental factors you took, you hold as you. That's, that is what happened. But by the time when you develop the, the awareness, so through the awareness, through the tranquility state, so what happens, you are capable to not to address, not to hold the thoughts, whatever arise, and you are capable to observe it. You, you, you are capable to observe your mental factors, arise it itself and exist for a moment and will disappear, change. So once you're capable to see that, you recognize that mental factor, that thoughts, 
is not you so then when when the happy thoughts arise in you you oh, you void from that thoughts you step back from that thought rather than go and hug go the whole that thought so then the thought arise for the moment and then it will go away as you know see just imagine for a day how many thoughts arise in you and moment you become happy and the very next moment you become very grumpy and the, you know very next moment you become very mean and the very next moment you will laugh and you become happy that all you claim as you but why you don't see the change why you don't see that it's 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 just the mental factors why you personalize it just imagine through the window you see a very beautiful view with the trees a beautiful landscape far away little mountain and the the, the lake and the flowers so just maybe birds flying blue sky so you see that everything through the window so you are the one who seen it so that now you in your mind you have a view so in that view that what you have there is no lake there is no mountain in your view the the lake is somewhere the mountain is somewhere then the flowers is somewhere the blue sky is somewhere but this everything you take into your mind and you hold that everything and then once it come to you and you have the view so the view that you have nothing to do with the the outside lake it's totally different experience of course you have it because of the that the the lake is there and at the same time it should contact you otherwise there are a lot of things we don't see we don't have any kind of view regarding that that things because we don't see we don't hear we don't smell so but anything once contact happen and out of the contacts or the feeling and then the thoughts arise but that whatever the thoughts arise you take that thoughts as the view so in that view there is no lake there is no beautiful low ugly the outside environment there is no mountain in in your view that view come as a result of mental factor so in your view if you have a mountain lake that you know, inside your head what, what should be <laughs> you know it it should be something else and as you know nowadays it's very simple that all the doctors scientists everybody know what is inside this head but see even we know that even we know this inside you know we have a brain and we have this all the blood the you know, flesh the bones everything when we see something we still not we are not capable to to understand it's a result of this mental factor we live in that whatever we see we live we hold in that view so then when you see something in that very moment rather than caught up in that view and hold it as you if you are capable to separate it from you and see it that in the outside world it as it is and at the same time the experiencer the perceiver that what happening in you if you are capable to see that what will happen 
that all the attachment, all the desires regarding that whatever the view that you have going to disappear. So that is the, 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 the mechanism that you should develop regarding anything. So for that, you have to have a very sharp and clear mind. So through meditation, that is what we develop. And when you develop it little by little, little by little, your viewpoint becomes so spanned. Your lens become more sharp and clear. I give a very clear example. If any, that person went to space or the moon and looked at what they see, and the very first thing that happened to them, they start to change their point of view regarding the world. The very reason is this, because look ourselves, we have boundaries, we have neighbors, boundaries, we have cities. We are, we are very limited with the, the states. We are, we are build up ourselves countries. And we, we already build up that, that lines inside our mind. But it is such, there is no such a thing like that. We are the one who build up that. So whoever went to space or the moon, what happened? Once they see the very first time, the earth, and their mind get out of that boundaries. And once they get out of that boundaries, their mind become more expand and different. Just imagine ourselves in this very moment, if you are capable to see the world without the name from the of the countries or the boundaries or the, you know, without any differences, if you are capable to see that each and everyone have the same place to live, see that what, what will happen to your point of view. It shift. So, when you go through deeper observation, so that kind of shift has started to happen in you because otherwise we hold it to our mental imagination, formation, mental factors, that mental factors, what happened? We take it as our conventional life and then we maintain it and what we call the ordinary lifestyle, casual life. So, but when it comes to deeper yourself, 24-7 that inside your mind, you dealing with your own imagination that happen inside your mind and that when that imagination becomes stronger, that mental formations, that cankers become stronger, what happened in the moment that whatever perceived, maybe it's not going to become that much value to you. That's the thing. That's what happened. Just imagine sometimes when people hold it to strong ideas and it's a, in, you know, family, in a family, sometimes it is very important for a whole family and maybe they are, they are you know, having a conversation when the people come to their strong idea, sometimes they, I don't care. You know, see, it doesn't matter. See that how that people, you know, hold it to that. And then that whatever situation come, whatever the, the, the change come, it, it, it doesn't matter to them. So this is what happened in day-to-day -day life with the, you know, in this ordinary life sometimes. So when you caught up in that your imagination, it doesn't matter for you what is exist outside. So that's the thing, and then you go with that uh, your what whatever that whatever you you experience. So, but in, when it come to meditation, you start to recognize that both. Of course, there is something there is something outside, and you recognize that also. And you know how you how that experience come to you. And at the same time, you know that what you experience inside you is not exactly what is outside. It is different. So as example, this bottle of water, 
So I, I see it, it is this outside there is a bottle of water. You know, you can measure it and you can wait it. Of course, there is something real, it's there. We can't say, no, it is not there. It's all in the mind. No, there is a water. See, I can touch it, you know, it's a bottle of water. There is something, but the thing is, what I see is not the this bottle. If I see this bottle, it cannot be here. What I see in my mind is something else. So then when you see something, can you separate that? That what you see in the outside and what you experience inside, if you are capable to recognize that both, you will see that what you experience this inside is, is moment by moment, moment by moment change. And that change is the most important thing, not this outside, because we are we are capable, you know, with the expired date and that things, we are capable to measure this change. But if you don't see that what you experience as a bottle of water change, and then you keep replacing, 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 you go with it. But once you know that what you experience as a bottle of water moment by moment change, in that very moment, you are more separately can observe and recognize and very clearly you can understand what is this. So like that, when it comes to our day-to-day -day life, so I'm going to give you simple, you know, few details in day-to-day -day life for you to work because when it comes to that the mental factors, there are kind of like a four categories. It's a, one is called universal factors, you know, for all you know minds. Each and every moment, 24-7, each and every human beings, you know, it's common. It's kind of like a feelings, you know, perception, volition. Those are very common. It's called universal factors. For me, for you, it's each and every human being. You know, they all go through that. And, and another one is called you know, occasional factors that sometimes it arises. It's kind of like a you know effort that the wholesome, you know kind of like a unwholesome thoughts, this sometimes it arises. It's not the, all the time, but it also arises in our mind. And then another factor called unwholesome factors. You know, that to do any unwholesome activities, you have to have these mental factors. Otherwise you can't do that unwholesome things, bad things. Bad mean, you know, just on the practice point of view, we bring that word, bad. Okay, but otherwise it's a, it's more kind of like, a, you know, you can't really say something bad. It's a kind of like comparison, you know. And then another factor is called, the, you know, the beautiful factors. Another way, it's, it's, it's a kind of like a wholesome factors. So universal factors, occasional or sometimes the, the occasional factors, mental factors, and unwholesome factors, and the beautiful factors or the wholesome factors. So when it comes to that, these all four categories in our mind, to perform any unwholesome thing, there are certain mental factors you should have, otherwise you can't. So there are mainly 14 factors, but that all the 14 factors not going to be all the time. But each and every mind, if you, if you recognize any unwholesome factor, any unwholesome activity, bodily, verbally, mentally unwholesome act, there are four things should have, otherwise you can, there is no way that person can perform that unwholesome act. 
See, there are four things. That See, that's the thing. That's once you recognize the very nature of the mind, you're not going to get it as you. So, if you are capable to handle these four mental factors in you, you are more, it's kind of like a, you know, 80%, 90%, you are more capable to get out of oh, most of your unwholesome activities. So people come to these unwholesome activities. One of the reasons is delusion. So the delusion means not knowingly reasons it, in other way, it, it, people say lack of wisdom, lack of understanding, lack of knowledge in a very conventional way, but it comes deeper to complete, not knowingly reason how things come to be as they are. So if you are not, if you don't know how things happen, maybe you start to imagine, maybe you start to create things Maybe you start to guess, oh, it, it may be like that. So like that, that that's how this uh, delusion can multiply. So somehow, when you perform any unwholesome act, anywhere in the world, any person, one of the things with that person is delusion. That means that person, even though that person thinks it is right, it's, it is not the exactly right thing that person knows. Because this is now, see, in case if any human being know exactly things as it is, forget about the religion, forget about the culture, forget about the age, forget about the gender. If any person know how things come to be as they are, if any person know that the exact reality regarding this anything, out of that person, there is no capability to happen any unwholesome act. That's the thing. So that's why practicing meditation is a way that you naturally you, you develop a self-discipline, self-wisdom yourself, because once you know how this happened, and out of that, anywhere you that out of your bodily, verbally, mentally actions, there is no way that unwholesome things going to happen. So then, when the situations come, remember any unwholesome situation. And sometimes we see, you know, the people do very crazy things sometimes. And even around you. When people say things, you know, behave mad and do things kind of like that. And the very first thing you should know, that person don't know the things exactly as it is. Even ourselves, if we do some wrong, you should not hold it to yourself. Oh, I am the one who did do like that. You should recognize in that very moment, whatever you did, the wrong action. Why you did it? Because so you didn't know the right reasons. So then what, what you should do? Start to look and learn and search about it, understand about it, investigate about it. And once you know, in the very next day out from you, there is no any unwholesome things going to happen. But what the mistake we does in, in, as a society, as a culture even. We don't educate ourselves. So educate doesn't mean you read a book and oh, no, you, you investigate when you do something wrong. You, you know yourself, oh, I did something wrong. And then, but sometimes you don't try to self-educate yourself to, to understand why it happened why you did that way. So even sometimes, you know, people go to prison and when people go to prison, there's no education for them 
to understand themselves or even society never want to give a second chance for them to be a better person. And when someone do a mistake from that day, we label that person as a wrong person. But according to the Buddha's teaching, there is no way. Why people do that way? Not because of that. That person, the person come to that position to do any unwholesome thing because not knowingly reasons. That's the reason. So then as a mother, father, as a parent, as a brother, sister, as a husband, wife, children, remember that when, when the other person do something wrong, if you know that other person did something wrong, the very first thing that you have to do, slowly, little by little, when the right time come, slowly start to educate that person. Don't try to blame, don't try to jump on that person, don't try to you know, fight with that person. In that way, we can't change people. So educate that person slowly. Because once the person know the right thing, there's no way out of that person the wrong things going to come. So that is the one thing, the delusion. And the, the second one is the shamelessness. Shamelessness. To do any wrong thing, this, this shamelessness should ha have with that person. If the person have, have the, this, the, the afraid or the fear to be shameless, then that person never going to do that. So that's why in the very conventional life, we have to remember as human beings, we live with the society and we nourish from other people. You know, our parents work so hard and uh, our brothers, sisters, friends and family members, you know, our ancestors sacrifice so many things for our life. And we are responsible for them also. And if we do something wrong, it is just not only for you. That innocent, your parents also going to pay for that. Why they should do that? You know, so then we have to look deeper and understand around us. When we going to do something, it is just not only me. There are a lot of people behind us. So we have some responsibility regarding other people. You know, in a very conventional way, you can make other people happy, you can make other people unhappy. You can make other person life heaven, you can make other person life hell. So as a family members, you, you have to understand that. So once you know that, always you, you step back a little bit. Because once, because once you disconnect from that bond, the shameless going to be with you. And then you will do any wrong thing. But if you are afraid to be shameless, there's no way the unwholesome things can happen. And the, the third one is fearless for wrongdoing. Fearless. You know, in meditation also a certain way that you have to be fearless. But here, fearless for wrongdoing. There are people, they, they don't afraid to do wrong things. And sometimes other people encourage to do wrong things. So then in the society, remember, there's no any unwholesome things can happen out of any person if that person have the fear for wrongdoing. So then yourself and always have that fear and other, the, the most important thing more than you knowingly or unknowingly as parents, as a husband, wife, children, as friends, as partners sometimes we encourage other people around us to do wrong things and we take their fear away from them. 
never do that. Because in the very next day, we don't know what the unwholesome act going to do this person. So that's a never do it. It is not good for, you know, for you and it's not good for entire humanity and it is not good for that person. So that's why if you see anyone and have that kind of fearlessness and slowly implant that fear for wrongdoing because that is where that, that your spiritual foundation is going to be. And the, the fourth one is the restlessness. This restless mind can be a very dangerous wild animal. And it can destroy your own life. It's, it can destroy your family life. It can destroy your social life. It can destroy your spiritual life. Restlessness. So that's why if you, do, if you look for mental health, physical health, and uh, spiritual development, somehow try to find some rest. And it doesn't mean you just uh, lie down and, uh, you know, without doing anything, just stay. No. You have to moderate your day-to-day -day activities and you have to make it more profitable. And at the same time, the here, when it comes to restlessness, one thing is not to feed with the greed, hatred, and the delusion. So if you can have any moment in your life without feeding the greed, hatred, or the delusion, then that is a kind of like a giving a rest. And the physical rest also necessary. You know, because when you become restless, that it destroy your creativity and it destroy your, you know, your true nature. It is very difficult for you to, to see things very clearly and you, um, you misunderstand things then and you misinterpret it once you become restless and then the, you know, everything collapse, your balance go out. So that's why, as you know, you know, if I give a physical example, you know, this most of the, as you know, when you build up the body, this all the bodybuilders, one of the major thing is resting, resting period. Without resting, you can't build the body. So apply the same concept to your mind. Without, build, without resting, you can't develop your mind. So restlessness. And if you see any wholesome, uh, any unwholesome act anywhere, remember, behind that act, that person had the restlessness. That's why that person came to that action. If the person have the enough mental, physical rest, there is no way out of that person that unwholesome act going to happen. Just imagine very simple, you know that, you know, very, very simple example. Sometimes when people get into arguments, fight, you know, physically sometimes attack. Maybe other people come and say, calm down, calm down, relax. See? Why? Because when you calm down, when you relax, the reaction, the way, the, the way you react, not going to happen. So then why you, why you wait till it boil up? And as a person, remain, keep that calmness in you. So, for that, you have to practice it. So then you now you know yourself. You are the one who your own mind, your mental factors itself. You are the one who nourish these mental factors to keep it like that way. So, so then when the situation comes to your mind, always remember it is not you, it is mental factors. If you, rec if you don't recognize that, it itself will start to take you to some different level. So once you know this, always you watch your mind. When there is a delusion, 
right away. Stop all the bodily, verbal, mental actions. Step back. Void. Don't go with that delusion. So it's a very simple example. When you drive, if you don't know the road properly, if you don't know where to go, if, you, if your GPS doesn't work, if you don't know which turn you should take, stop. First start to ask from someone and then be very clear with the, the road you drive and then start to drive, otherwise you get heat. So like that. And uh, so without that clarity, don't get into any action. So the delusion and the same lushness. If there is the same lushness for anything, always remember, never into bodily, verbally, mentally action. Step back. Fearlessness for wrongdoing. Never encourage anybody. And at the same time, yourself, take care always. Keep that fear. For wrong thing, why? Because in this very conventional life, and you have no idea, your grandparents had a dream about you to maybe thinking, oh, my grandchildren will be a better people. Your parents, you know, they sacrifice everything for you and they gave, you know, all the best things for you. And uh, they thought you are the angel for their life. And then they had a dream. They have a dream regarding yourself. You will be a better person one day. So then when you're going to do something, think about, you know, you have to think about you and at the same time, think. Your parents, your grandparents, your husband, your wife, your children, your brothers, sisters, your friends. Think everybody. Then you will see more than one person. There are a lot of people around you. So fearlessness. You know, get out of it. So that have the fear. And the fourth one is the restlessness. So always remember physical, mental, have physical, mental rest. And not only yourself, if your husband, if your wife, if your children, if your parents, if your partners, brothers, sisters, if your friends have a very restless life, remember, advise them, slowly try to provide, facilitate some kind of environment for them to rest. Don't encourage them, don't push them to, you know, go with that restless life. So you take care of yourself and at the same time help for others because it is a mental factor. It is not that person and that restless life maybe will take that person to different level, to act something different. So that's why once you have this deeper understanding, rather than personalizing your own thoughts, you are capable to step back, avoid and see it very clearly. And in that very moment, your clarity become more sharp and clear. And out of that clarity, you are capable to see the reality, how things come to be as they are. In that very moment, your perception become your wisdom. And rather than go with the thoughts or the mental formations, your mind has a capability to understand things, experience things with the perception that when you perceive. So with that, let's get into practice a little bit now. So your right palm on your left and neck head straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. So bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes yourself and say, so Patveva, oh, may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment with this sitting, 
May my body become more comfortable. May my breath be more smooth. May no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment. This is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment, observing the sensation of your inhalations and exhalations. So in the beginning, deeply and gently, breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. allow your inhalations, exhalations happen itself. And when it happens through the sensation, recognize it, do nothing else.
bring your attention to your body please observe your posture We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally, repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are pray low strong, tall low short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away. Already born, no yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone in harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. to your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. To all six directions and friends, like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy, without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance, or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it, with the maximum effort to the highest, wishing yourself May all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. And also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Uttavata chami sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva nimodam tu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe bhuta nimodam tu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe satta nimodam tu sabba sampati siddhya Imaya dhamma nudamma pati patiya buddham pujemi dhammam pujemi sangham pujemi Adhaya imaya pati patiya jati jaravya dimaranam ha paribundisami Idhammi punya kammanga savakkaya vahango tu sabbadukka pamunchatu Beshwit